Welcome back to another episode of Happy Hour here on the Filmaholic channel. Uh, today we have a li good list of uh, topics here. Um, I'm going to start with like some of the lesser ones first uh, and then work our way into, I guess, the big ones. Uh, just how I feel like doing it today. Um, so to kick things off, uh, apparently Christopher Miller revealed on Twitter this week that he had actually pitched to Sony um, for Tobey Maguire Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland, all of their different Spider-Mans, to make an appearance in Spider-Verse, the animated film. What do you think about that? I, well, think, it, I, think, me... I think it didn't happen. <laughs> uh, Sony said too soon. Quotation. <laughs> um, and you know, when I first saw the article, I'm like, oh man, what a missed opportunity. But it makes sense not to do this, especially you know when they said too soon. I don't know what they mean. They're, they mean by that. Does that mean too soon as people wouldn't get it or too soon as they have other stuff that they could do with that? Why blow it now? Because you can make a live action movie with those yeah. three. I don't think that's what they're thinking. <laughs> I hope we see that eventually, uh, you know, whether it be the fourth Holland film or a film after that. Um, I think it'll be a film after that. I think it'll probably be Tom Holland's fifth film because um, I think they probably have a, a four film plan. Or with Marvel, probably do. Um, I, I think that Craven will probably be the villain in the next one, or something like that. And then the fourth one will be Sinister Six. And then after that, maybe we'll get the Spider Verse. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping. Uh, maybe you'll get Green Goblin about that time too. I hope, but I'm giving up pretty much <laughs> hope on that. Um, and if we do, it'll probably be like the monster version that I'm less excited about. But I mean, it'd be, if we got a cool Norman, see, that's what I'm like. Even if he did that, if we had a cool Norman who lived beyond that Green Goblin and became Iron Patriot, then that's that's exciting. I could live with the monster version of Green Goblin. Um, but yeah, they they said it was too soon. And I mean, if you had, you could throw uh, Tobey Maguire and Gar Andrew Garfield because there's movies they're not making any more of those right now. You could throw those in Spider Verse, but like if you threw Holland in there, you'd have to tie it into the MCU. Like it wouldn't make sense and a lot of stuff. Like obviously that wasn't going to happen and that. At that point, he'd only had one movie, too, uh, of his own. So, uh, And I think that came out after Infinity War, so you had that in question, too, and just just a lot of stuff. There's a Blue Jay on my balcony. That's cool. I thought somebody was breaking in. <laughs> no, he's eating a worm. That's awesome. Uh, it's like that. Great, man. He's eating that uh, Murder Hornet video. That's yeah, what's happening that's right there. Check that out. <laughs> Go watch it. Um also, Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds says he doesn't know if the the character will show up in the MCU, but he said there's infinite possibilities. We've talked about this before. I definitely don't think he should show up in the MCU. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't doesn't uh, fit. <laughs> now, I think that MCU characters will show up in his movies. Certain ones. But not the other way around. Yeah. Because uh, I think that's a... You saw that with X Men. X Men showed up in his movie for funny cameos, um, but he didn't show up in their movies because it'd be breaking the fourth wall. It's not, you know, especially the MCU. Everything you have built, it just wouldn't feel wouldn't feel right. Like what's happening? Um, well, he just yeah, he knows he's fake, so it's like why well, put him in that movie? Right. Um, I'm not sure what characters will show up in his movies um, as for cameos. I'm curious about that if it happens. Not I sure wouldn't be. Plan is, so. I wouldn't be surprised if Tony Stark showed up in it. Just savage. Just because. Uh, and whoever the new Wolverine is could pop up. Uh, maybe Thor. Rocket, something like that. Probably that's what I would say. I'd like to see him with Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, Scream 5, Nev Campbell is in talks to return. Uh, the directors reached out to her. Uh, so they sent her a letter talking about their respect for Wes Craven and how they wanted to honor what he had done. Um, and now that she feels a little bit more okay with moving on and, and making the film, uh, she says she hopes they could work something out. She's going to be in the movie. She's got nothing else going on, man. Well, I thought that too, and that it, it, it's true. But it's also like last last big movie she did was that skyscraper with the rock. 
Yeah, she was in House of Cards around that time too. Um, which I feel like she should have got a bigger role in that than than she actually did. But um, yeah, because I don't think she's a bad actress. Uh, but I, I, you know, if I'm her, I'm looking at the script and just seeing how it is. Because if they're bringing her back in like a leading role or at least a good a good amount of the story, and you have the respect for the directors, then do it. But if if it's something where it's like not if it's not good, I don't. I don't hope she doesn't do it. Because like, if it's not good, I, I would rather original actors say no, continue this without me, versus you coming back and then me feeling obligated to watch it. Recast. I can't imagine they would do that. I think they would just write her out of the story. I bet you'd be happy. What? Recast her, Jennifer Love Hewitt. I wouldn't watch it. So. You'll watch it. You'll like it. We already discussed that. Uh now, I mean, if she's in it, then I'm I'm probably gonna watch it unless it's a rebuke, which I don't You'll I still. don't see how I don't think they'll do that, but we'll we'll see, um, because that would like I said that's not respecting Wes Craven who directed all four films, and I don't I don't think they're gonna do that. I think it's gonna be a fifth film, but I don't know I, I think it's gonna be a fifth film. I think she's coming back. Whether they bring Dewey and Gale back, I don't know, because it's probably not going to be in the same town. And honestly, they might not bring them back for this one. Maybe they'll save them for a later film, um, and they might just bring her back and have it in a different location. But, you know, at this point, I don't know. I want it to make sense. So if she's not the lead, if you bring in a new cast of characters, is whoever they're after related to her? Or is it just she happens to be in the town with these people? Because then it's like, well, that's a coincidence that doesn't really make sense. (laughs) <laughs> you just have killer. I don't want that to happen. I've never wanted that to happen. Even, uh, you know, we that was a thought that a lot of people had for like Scream Four. Uh, before it came out, it was like, oh, she's gonna, or even Scream Three, it was like they were gonna have her beat the killer in the final film. I think it would ruin her character arc. It would ruin like because, and I felt more strongly about that the last time I rewatched it. I was like, after everything she's been to, I just. I, would just take it away from me. Why well, she's a killer? Everything she's been through. But if you want, especially Scream Three, which is the the worst film in this, in the, I like all of them, but it's definitely the the worst film in that series. It's like her brother's the killer, and you know she has to kill him. I'm just like, ah, I just don't see her doing taking that turn. Um, but now her ha- having a kid with Patrick Stempsey's character, who she gave up for adoption, coming back as being the killer. You down for that? Yeah. Well, that's my version that I have in my head that I've written. I guess it's, a screen, it's a Scream 5 and 6. Two-part film. Not a two-part oh. film, but you got to make both of the films. She gave up two two twins for adoption. We don't know that yet. We just find out at the end of the first that film. Way. What? Now we know. Well, the end of the first film, you find out that our lead is her daughter and that's why the killers are after her and only doing Gail would be the originals in that film and then the last film you'd bring Sydney back and the killer in that film would actually be her son have a whole plan yeah anybody wants to reach out maybe the directors I don't know if the screenplay's written but I can help out (laughs) Uh, speaking of her being on House of Cards, um, House of Cards, uh, Michael Kelly, who played Doug on the show, he spoke out this week about how, and I had forgotten about this until I read the article, back when House of Cards was going into its final season, this is before all the stuff with Kevin Spacey happened, which is also funny as a topic too, um, before, not funny, him, but, uh, before all that stuff happened, you know, they were going into season five. They were they were shooting that season, and around that time, they were playing all these different spinoffs. Uh, I know there was supposed to be one that I was – well, there were several. There was, I guess, three. There was one that was supposed to be about uh, the news reporters in the show, which I don't know why that didn't, didn't ever happen. Because with Trump and everything, like it seemed like that would have been great for a show at that time and could have really hit. Um but it, for some reason, it didn't happen. I don't know, like, if they just 
said, oh, he just ruined this, the show completely. We have to get rid of it because that's what it felt like. But um, I think the reporter show should happen. They were also at one point talking about like the um, like the ben- benefactor. Uh, what is Miss? What is the, the Miss Long? What does she, they do? The lobbyist. Lobbyist. Yeah. So let me a show about uh, lobbyist. Um, and then th- those were the two that I heard about, which I was less interested in that one, but still would have checked it out. And apparently there was a third one about Doug. Um, and so season five was originally he, Michael Kelly spoke out about it and how it was scrapped. Um, he was supposed to be a director on the show as well as, uh, producing it and starring in it. But, um, his character was going to go to prison at the end of season five. And then in this spinoff series, Frank, which was Kevin Spacey's character, was going to get him out of prison. And while he was, I don't know if he was while he was in prison or when he got out, Michael Kelly said that he meets a young, charismatic black man. I don't know why it was written like that, but, um, and that he helps him run for local, like a local election. And that it was supposed to have a little bit of a lighter tone than House of Cards. So. I mean, obviously, you didn't watch the show, so. I've well, watched one season, so it's. <clears throat> um, to me, I don't. I wouldn't want to see this anyways. Uh, the other shows, like, were spinoffs in the same world, but about new characters that more interested me. Yeah. This one was like, I didn't necessarily care that much about Doug. I more cared about Frank and Claire, and there was a couple other characters that I liked too, like Mahersha Ali's character. Um, and the woman that he was with in the show, but they got rid of them like after the second season or something like, you know, um, the Doug really, he, he's one, somebody who started off with like being interesting, but to me, he just became so like disconnected throughout the show, just like becoming a murderer, like just psycho crazy, uh, especially you're not going to watch it. Are you? I doubt it. I mean, it's I mean over. he kills Rachel, this other character at one point. And at me, to me, and they said that was like his defining moment and the sure, but like when he makes that moment, that the decision, I just didn't care anymore about that character. And so like that would have still happened because that was before season five. So I, I don't, I wouldn't have cared. Um, especially like if you're giving him some sort of redemption angle in this, I don't know. Um, obviously the way it turned out in season five, they ended up making it the final season for some reason too like i think you could have continued on because you made her president anyways when season five started um i guess it was season i think it was season five it's been a while since i watched it i guess that was the final season um you know it kicked off with her becoming president and then finished up the the story that you kind of had started with him and she kills doug at the end so he's not getting a spinoff now um but yeah, I mean, you could have continued. You could have made another season with her as president, like and continue that. But I guess they were just like, mm, no Kevin Spacey, no show. Yep. I don't yep. know. Makes no sense to me because Robin Wright did a good job in that season. Um, let's move on from there. Talking about more shows. Um, R. L. Stein has a uh, he has a, a book, a, a graphic novels called Just Beyond. I think it's a series. Um, and they're doing an anthology series on Disney Plus about this. What do you think about that? I haven't read it, but I like Goosebumps, so I'll watch it. I have not read it either. Um, wait, you like the Goosebumps books or the movie? Both. Or both? But. I've seen the second Goosebumps. I did like the first one. But yeah, I like the books. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I've watched both movies. I don't think I've seen the first one. No, you I've went seen... to see the second one, yeah. I went to see the second one, and I enjoyed it, uh, surprisingly. I was oh. very surprised. Um, but I've heard the first one's good too from you and the other people. But um, I, I did like the books too as a kid. Um, uh, the mask, the haunted mask was my favorite, and the sequel I like that. Um, I wish they would really like readapt that. I, I I felt like those books, you know, they made the movies and the movies are what they are. And the movies are actually kind of like the Scooby Doo movies, right? Where they take like a new story, but they bring in all of these other characters from the the show or the books or whatever and like put it in there um but i think you could actually like take those books and readapt it into a film like just those i mean you could make that the anthology series is just each episode's the book yeah but i mean obviously this isn't goosebumps this is just beyond so i don't know like 
how different that is, but I wish they would do a Goosebumps one. And I think there was a Goosebumps show at some point, but yeah. redo it. Bring it back. Um, they Disney Plus is also doing a National Treasure show. What do you think about that? As long as it's got Nicolas Cage. I don't I think he'll be in it. I doubt it. They're making National Treasure 3, which he'll be returning. Finally. Um, I think that's a smart move. I don't know. The show with people, there are some dedicated fans of National Treasure. And when they're making the new the new film, um, it, it kind of it might be smart to make that show, put it on Disney Plus, and put it out either closely before or after the film. Um, you could do, well, you could do it before and have it lead in. Uh, it depends on what it is and who's in it, you know? Um, but if, if it's not really connected, which I hope it is, but if it's not, then do it after. But um, it could be about another character. It could be about uh, the two supporting characters in the film. I don't know why they wouldn't be with him, though, because that's his wife. Well, well I haven't seen the movie in a long time. I remember the second one not being good, but uh, best friend. I don't know why he wouldn't be there. Could be about his best friend. Could be about his dad. Could be a prequel. Oh boy, D. H. John Voight. No, nah, you recast. Uh, I doubt John Voight's going to be in the third one. No, he'll be dead. In in the movie. Oh man, that just won't explain it. Maybe. I don't know. I was rewatching uh, this, this uh, off topic, the Last Crusade, and I was like, I don't know why they just said that Sean Connery's character was dead. It could have just been like, ah, he's somewhere else. It's, nah, he died. No, it wasn't Last Crusade. Sorry, it was uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That was it. Which I mean, it's like 19 years later, but you know, he's still alive. He's dead, man. <laughs> okay. It made it clear uh, for you. Also, uh, it's been 10 years since Iron Man 2 came out. This is the uh, yeah, 10th anniversary. Not that bad of a film, guys. Check it out. Rewatch it. <laughs> Justin Hammer is awesome. Did a good job with that. It's got, it's easily one of the, um, to me, one of the most rewatchable Marvel films, too. Um, it's not How about that? heavy on a lot of stuff, and maybe that's why people have issues with it. But it's, I don't know, it's a really fun film, I think. But, you know, that is one of the... I, I think I think it's a more rewatchable film than Iron Man. It's not as good as Iron Man. But if I'm just sitting around, like, doing something and I want to pop something in and watch while I'm doing it, I'd rather pop in Iron Man 2 than Iron Man 1. Because you don't have all this stuff at the beginning. And I'm not saying they shouldn't have done that in the movie, because they definitely should have. But you got all the stuff in Iron Man to get through of him becoming Iron Man and all of that. Iron Man 2 is like, boom, right off the bat. Well, you should watch the better sequel, which is The Winter Soldier. No. You mean the better sequel is Civil War and... Yeah. Okay. Um, also, uh, you want to talk about Tenet real quick? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... We're going to find out within a week whether it gets pushed back or not. So, uh, I don't think they will. You don't think they will push it back? No, I don't think so. I hope they don't. I hope it's the big movie, the big welcome back movie. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a couple other things right before it, I think. Um, like SpongeBob and other yeah. stuff, trying to bring families, trying to bring stuff back in, which ultimately, I don't know how good of an idea it is to have like family films like that be your kickoff yeah i don't think i mean I, I, kids are actually less likely to get this anyways i think like or suffer from it um it's older people so but you know kids bring in a lot more germs too with hand you know so i, I don't know like i think tenant's a good option to bring is a good choice to bring people back to the theater but um even even when that happens, when they open up, I because I, I I've heard from people that some theaters are planning on some chains are starting to plan to open at the end of June. Um, whether that's true or ends up happening, I don't know, but that seems to be what the plan is right now. Um, and I think it'll probably be like less people that they let into an auditorium, uh, which kind of bums me out. I was thinking about it because like 
that means that me and Sarah's probably gonna have to go to the theater to buy our tickets because you're probably not gonna be able to buy it online like next to each other. They'll probably do like spaces in between, like at least one. I don't, see, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah. Don't, just don't go to movies. Don't show the movies. Just don't go if, if you're worried about sitting beside somebody. I think I, that's there's how it's There's got to be some kind of personal responsibility in there. Like, can't just be like, like say, like, well, like you say, why can't I not buy two tickets if I wanted to? Yeah. No, that's, well, I'm not saying you can't buy two tickets if you buy them from your phone. Yeah. I think that'll happen. But I'm saying, like, you know, because we both have Regal Unlimited, that means we have to buy it separately. Yeah. So, like, we won't be able to sit together unless we buy it at the theater. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. I mean, obviously, because that's like, I have to go out of my way now to do that. And I, maybe it's not the case, but I just imagine that's probably the way it's going to be. It's I can't. Like that. I, I think it'll be at least a seat in between everybody, if not two seats, uh, depending on just how things are going at the time. Trash. But, um, which, I mean, other than. Not being able to do it the convenience of just buying it here on the phone, I don't mind it so much because then I don't have to. Uh, I I want people further away from me, yeah. all times, not just now with coronavirus. All times, just I'm, don't I'm, sit I'm next to me for years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been yeah, champion social distancing for a long time. <laughs> Come on, guys, don't, don't, six feet away. Don't get near me at all. <laughs> I don't need to go out. I don't need to leave the house. No, nah, I'm good. Get away. Um, talking about also House of Cards going to this. Um, I don't know if you watched it. I stumbled upon it. I watched a little bit of it last night, but then turned it off because I was like, fuck this guy. Uh, Kevin Spacey put out another video. No, I didn't watch it. Why, why does this keep happening? It's so awkward and just bizarre. Like He just keeps putting out these videos from his house. Like he has a huge fan base, and he's just like, I mean, maybe he did at one point. You keep watching it, dude. Cause it's so weird. Like but I couldn't help. It's part of the fan base. I don't know if I watched the ones at Christmas or if I just read about it. Cause he posted some of them. I know he posted some before that too, and all of those that he had been posting, he would he would post in in character of Frank from House of Cards, uh, which I don't know if anybody told him that Frank's dead. Um, Out of that universe. <laughs> But this video he just posted, uh, well, I watched it yesterday. I don't know if it was yesterday. It, it was some, I, I don't know what it was for. I didn't read the like that part of the article of like, if it was for some sort of charity type thing, it was like pretzel something. And like, he was dressed up for like a beer garden or something. I, cause he was thanking the people involved and I don't know. I don't know what it was for. Um, but it was just so weird. You know, he gets on there and he was talking for like 15 minutes or more. Um, I watched just like the couple first minutes because I wanted to see if he was in character, like what he was, what, what is this? You know, like you're out of everything. And he, he says that, you know, um, which I'll talk about that in a second, but he's just so you're done, dude. You're over. Yeah. Career is finished. Like, even if you didn't do what you said, like there's no way back now. No. Um, but he, he he compares himself himself as a victim in the in the film or in the in the video, uh, pe- comparing people who have lost their job to coronavirus, um, who aren't sure if they're gonna get you know rehired, all this stuff. He. And everything that's happening, he compares to him. That's a bold move. And his situation <laughs> of waking up and realizing that his career was over and not sure if he's going to be able to act again. He, go, he goes into this long spiel about um, acting and how that was his life and how he's not going to be able to act anymore and like comparing it to these victims who have suffered from this pandemic. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. I mean... What does he have to lose? Like, he can do anything he wants at this point, as far as yeah, like from his yeah. house. Do it. <laughs> Careers. I mean, I guess you put out these creepy videos, people are going to tune in. That is a bold move. Yeah, it's a it's a very bold move. Um, 
Yeah, just. <laughs> uh, Space Force, the trailer. We were talking about this before we began. It dropped this week. We're both excited for it. Um, I think you were more into the trailer than I was. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> some of the humor. I mean, I love Steve Carell, so I'm like, I'm gonna watch it anyways. You got Greg Daniels involved. Um, but I was watching the trailer. I'm like, ah, this is a, isn't as funny as I was hoping it was gonna be. The trailer, and but then we hit the part where he starts singing Beach Boys, and that really got me. Then I was like, okay, now I'm in. Now I'm in. Uh, I told you I was in first first scene. Uh, you're gonna be in charge. What? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm. I can't wait. That'll be something I just binge watch as soon as I get home. I'm sure I will. I wonder if it's gonna be 20 minute episodes or an hour. I don't know if they've said yet. I think like point two. I can't imagine it being an hour within comedy. Yeah. Well, they had some scenes in the office when it was longer. And you could tell where they should have been split. Most of them, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you can absolutely tell this is where the episode was going to end. <laughs> um, also, Hercules from Disney. Uh, you know, they're, re- they're adapting the animated film. We're getting a live-action version. Russo Brothers are producing it. Um, but the more they talk about it, I wonder if they're directing it. Good, but. Um, but I don't. I don't know. Uh, but the Hercules won't be. They said it won't be a literal translation, so it's not going to be like the Lion King was, where it was pretty much taking the animated film and let's do a live action version. They're not doing that with this. It is going to be a little bit different. They're. They said they're going to be inspired by the original. Um, and they want to make a film like that, but this one will not be the same movie. How does that make you feel? I wish it was the same movie, man. Yeah, um, honestly, you know, it's not one like Mulan where you can switch it, like I guess more factually. Right. Uh, uh, come on, man. It's, give me pain and panic. There's some that you could do that with, like no, Milan. I think it's gonna work. But I also haven't seen that yet. I need to watch that animated film because I might feel differently. But I'm just blown away by the animated film. Um, and I'll rewatch Hercules too. I love the animated film, but I understand why you don't want to do that in a live action one. The okay, but that movie. Um, we'll what see. And I'm a little bit different because I'm not a huge like I like these movies. I know they're good, but I'm not as into a lot of these animated movies as like say you are, like Aladdin or whatever. So like I watched the new Aladdin, and I I like the new Aladdin. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I enjoyed this, surprisingly. Um, you know, but, like, The Lion King, I do love The Lion King. So, like, I was worried about that, which I like that animated. I mean, I like the live action better than you do. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was worried about that because I was like, I don't want a remix or I don't want, like, take The Lion King and, and change it up. I won't. Yeah. That Lion King, and I want to see it in a live action form. I that's what I wanted going in, and that's what I feel like I got. And a lot of people were like, "It's the same movie," and I'm like, "Well, that's the point." Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what I wanted, but that's not why I didn't care for it as much. Right, but yeah, um, like I want that Hercules. That's what I want. And the Hercules, um, it's one of my more watched ones as a kid than some of the other ones so like yeah i would prefer to see you take that film and bring it to live action um i already have my cast too man <laughs> but I, I i i do see what they're where they're coming from because they're like we do we're, we want to do it like we do our marvel movies like say civil war where it's like it's our version of civil war and you know like if somebody wants to see this other version they could just go look at the comics or they can watch the other movie um I can see where they're coming from, but also it's like there's a reason these movies are successful. It's not like you're taking a a random film from the 70s that not many people have seen, say, and remaking it. And you're like, oh, we're not going to make it straight remake. We're going to take it and be inspired by it and do this such the thing. Because that way it works. People haven't seen the movie. You're making a new one for a new generation, all this. A lot of people have seen Hercules or the Lion King, or whatever. And it's like, 
people that are going to come to see this movie. <laughs> and that's why they're going to come see it. So it's like they want to see it because it is that film and live action. Nope. So, but I don't know. It's, it's really a sticky situation because it's Disney. They're going to make these movies because they're going to be successful. These movies are. But I, I mean, wonder what they're going to change, though. Like, Because I was thinking certain stuff, I don't know what you're going to leave out, what you're going to add. I'd imagine the film is probably going to be longer because I'd imagine the animated is probably less than two hours. This will probably be like a, probably another 45 minutes added on to it. So there's probably be more stuff in it um, and maybe changing some things. Maybe they won't have music in it at all. I don't know. I mean, I don't mind that, but then you don't really need the muses, which was a big part of the Hercules movie. Yeah, people, people are going to be upset. I can tell you that right now. You, if you if you get rid of that, they're not going to have it, dude. Which I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen. Someone that sings. But um, I think you'll you'll keep a lot of the. I would say you would keep a lot of the same elements, but. And I, I haven't seen Milan yet, the animated one. But I, I'm already like with the with the live action, which I think looks really good. I'm not excited for it. I was kind of disappointed when even beforehand I was like, man, the main I, when I saw that poster is, or when I saw the advertisement and stuff as a kid, I wanted to watch it and never got around to it. I was really interested in that dragon. He's not gonna be in the movie. Well, and that's I understand why he's not gonna be in that movie because they're making it more realistic. They're making it, I guess. I saw people running up walls and stuff in the trailer, so I don't know how. Yeah, she she well she, I mean it was realistic. She had a uh, something. I can't remember what she used to get up there. I have to rewatch the trailer. I don't know. You watch the movie. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. And, and the Mid Lady and the Tramp too. And I can't. I, you know, that was pretty. It was a. Did you watch the live action Lady and the Tramp? No. Why? It was good. I liked it. There was some stuff that doesn't really make sense in it. We can talk about that at a different time, but um, but I but I liked it. Never one of my favorites as a kid, so I just well, a lot of these films aren't my favorite as a kid, so I still I guess that's when maybe maybe I enjoy some of the live action more ones more than that. I don't know if I did I enjoy the Jungle Book more than you did. Well, I think we're about the same. Four. Man, I might be four and a half. But it's been a while since I watched it. I have yeah. it at a four right now. Uh, um, Cinder- one better, though. Cinderella I haven't seen yet. Um, it's coming to Disney Plus in the fall, so I'll watch it then. Animated? Uh, no, the live action. Oh. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't remember anything about the animated, but... Well, that's not movies anywhere. I just added it so you can watch it, too. I'll check it out. Um, but yeah, Jungle Book, I got it at four, so about the same. And I that's did, like that one was darker at times. You know, going off this Hercules one, Peter Pan's going to really piss me off if it's not a straight ad- adaptation. It's going to be trash, dude. Uh, <clears throat> we talked about a ghost story yesterday, and I like it and everything, and whatever have you. But if the Peter Pan they make at Disney is not a straight adaptation of the animated film, I don't care about it it's not because be. that's what I want. Not with him. See. That's what I've wanted to see since I was a kid. Is I want to see this this version in live action, like because look, you have yeah. you have all of these other live action Peter Pans from different studios. Why make another one that's not the animated one at Disney? If it's Disney doing it, do the an- do the animated one. Bring that to life, live action. It works. People like the animated one. The other Peter Pan films haven't really worked, other than Hook. But, you know, that's a different thing. That's <laughs> Spielberg and Rob Williams. <laughs> right. Um, moving on from that, uh, the playlist reports that a, the Supergirl film, which is one of the DC films that were announced, they you know spun their board and it landed on Supergirl, so they announced it. Um, it's now been rumored to be shelved. And they've decided, hey, maybe we should go make a Superman film instead. Must have been, if somebody had their hand on it, they had to spin again. <laughs> what do you think about this? 
I don't care. <laughs> just at all. Any so DC much news. that we just don't care anymore about DC. Any uh, DC news you tell me, I'm not going to care about. So. I, yeah, honestly, I, I don't think, outside of Batman, with P- Pattinson's Batman, I don't think there's anything with DC right now that you could tell me that would excite me. I mean, I, I watched the Suicide Squad, but I don't know why it's getting made. I'm not even, I'm not excited for that. I, I mean, I like James Gunn. That's the only reason. I'll watch it, but I'm not excited I, for it. Um, it's not like, oh, when is this movie coming out? I have to watch it, but I'll be it when it comes out. Definitely more excited for Wonder Woman 3, or Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, I stroke. Uh, Wonder, <laughs> well, Wonder Woman 3, too. Just bring them all. Just bring those movies. Get rid of Suicide Squad. Um, I'm definitely excited for 84 more. Um, although I think it's probably going to end up being bad. I hope it's not, but we think that it probably. You're not getting me, dude. Trailer, trailer didn't get me. The trailer got me. The only part I liked was he was catching the lightning, and that was at the very end. There's so much that I get annoyed with. with, Why can a Supergirl film work? Yes. There's not a Man of Steel two. Superman. It's most iconic superheroes of all time. Like I just don't know what you're doing with your universe anymore. I don't think you know. I don't think there is a universe anymore. You're just making these films, and they could be in the same world or not, and that's stupid to me. Don't worry about it, man. That's stupid, and it's just, it's just uninteresting. Aquaman was trash and just left a bad taste in my mouth. Mouth. That I feel like that's what they're gonna move moving forward. That's what their films are gonna be like. Kind of comical, but I mean not funny, but funny for somebody, I guess. <laughs> Uh, just bad, and that's what I got with Birds of Prey too. I didn't like it. Yeah. I Oof. hope that's not Wonder Woman 1984, but I'm worried it is going to be. Um, I think Batman's going to be the only. It's a you know an exception because it's not going to be in the same toy box with these other characters. It's going to be off on the side. Matt Reeves is doing his own thing with that. At least we think it looks like it. Yeah, look, it doesn't look like he's playing around with his. It uh, seems like he has more say over what happens because these aren't these aren't the same kind of cast decisions you would see from the DCEU. No, like he, you know, he's not throwing Willem Dafoe and Dolph Lundgren in there. What's random wrong with role. Willem Dafoe, dude. In that role, come on, I, man. Well, why is he I, in that role exactly? Why? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's like he, he's not, you know, Matt Reeves is he's making weird choices, but not out there. Uh, not the not the bad kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, like you, you cast Batman as you know Robert Pattinson's Batman. You already started off, you know, showing you're not playing around. <laughs> and I just I don't know, like even even with everything that happened, it never made sense not to Greenland a Man of Steel two to me. Um. I'm not a huge fan of Man of Steel. I think it's a, it's a meh. Um, but you bring in a new director, bring Henry Cavill back, who had you know a P, you know he he got more popular even than he already was because he had the Mission Impossible movie come out, and now you have The Witcher. Yeah. So I'm like, you could bring him bring him back, make a Man of Steel two. You could even have some other characters pop in if you wanted to. Make it a little, make it steep. It don't completely change the tone, but make it a little bit lighter. And I don't know if you want to bring back Lex Luthor, you can. You can, there's other villains you can bring in. No. Well, see, so that's the, that's the thing about directors. I don't. I didn't hate. That's not the version of Lex Luthor that you should have had, and or I wanted to see. But I don't think he was terrible in the movie, actually. That was awful. Um, Shove a Jolly Rancher in my mouth. Punch in the face. <laughs> I, th- I think it, it could work. But um, it never made sense to me to be like, we don't know what, we're to, what to do with Superman. We're not making another movie. Excuse me? You don't know. <laughs> the, the biggest, one of the biggest superheroes of all time. Just, no. There's not, there's not enough stuff out there. <laughs> Can't make it. Yeah. Nothing. Maybe it will make Supergirl instead. That was successful in the CW, so which is another thing. 
they look i feel like they keep look you know in terms of the flash too which when's that movie ever coming out man but not now after he choked a woman they, they look at these shows on the tv and they're like like supergirl being successful and they're like well let's just do the live action version man people already have the version on tv yeah they like it why, that's the why? Live action version I don't know. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, if you had a whole universe, yeah, give us give us Supergirl in phase three or four. But no. I still can't believe Green Lantern is going to a show. <laughs> uh, I have Bad Boys 4 written down here. There was an article talk I read talking about that and whether or not it's actually going to happen. Um, because originally, you know, there was a bad boys three was supposed to come out in like 2017 and it ended up getting pushed back and didn't come out until 2019. But originally you look back, bad boys three was supposed to come out in 2017 and bad boys four was supposed to come out in 2019. Both of these had release dates. Both of these were set to be made. And then, you know, bad boys four was kind of pushed off the calendar and then bad boys three or bad boys for life, which it ended up being called got pushed to 2019 or 2020, I guess it came out, I guess, beginning of the year. I, I saw it this year. I couldn't remember. I thought it, it didn't come out in December. What was it, February? January? January. Um, so it came out. Do you think we're getting a Bad Boys 4? Or do you think? Yeah, I think we'll get it. I, I, I think so. Uh, the article that I read was like talking about how, like, I mean, obviously they set it up at the end yeah. of the last. Well, you already had plans to do it anyway. Exactly. You set it up at the end, and as much money as it made, which surprised me. Well, it was critically liked, too. Okay. It didn't so get it bad. Hated. It wasn't hated, no. But, I mean, I mean as far like, I, I did not expect it to do the numbers that it did. For, I'm uh, glad it did. Nearly 20 years later, like, that's a surprise. As you saw from my rating, I gave it a 4 out of 5. I really had a lot of fun with Bad Boys for Life. Um, bad Boys and Bad Boys 2. You watched I gave... Them. What? Watched them too late, man. Yeah, sure. I, I you know, I, it's that's me watching it now. The humor doesn't work for me. A lot of it. The first one, the lighting was I couldn't see what was even happening. It was just so dark. The second one had they were better on that, but it was definitely Michael Bay heavy cinematography where it was like there's a blockbuster filter on nope. uh, iMovie and it's pretty much Bad Boys filter. They should have just called it that um, instead of blockbuster. Bad Boys for Life, so much, it's just such a better screenplay, first of all. Like, characters are more likable. They've aged. I thought it was more funny, but once again, I hadn't watched it as a kid, those other ones. I just liked it so much more better. So much better. Um, I, I, and the stuff with his kid, the ending stuff, which I don't want to like give spoilers on the here for that necessarily, but the stuff at the end. Well, I kind of did. This movie's been out for four months. Ain't nobody going uh, to yeah, watch it by now. You ain't going to watch it. The stuff with this kid at the end, I wasn't a huge fan of. Well, I, I, I like the twist, but the fact that he went to prison and then all. And he's like, oh, you want some time taken off? And he goes and meets with him and all that. I didn't really like that part. I think the kid should have died at the end. Shot um, him up. Well, I think he should have jumped in, like, being a sacrificial thing. Like, oh, you know, you're my dad. I'm going to sacrifice myself for you and that kind of thing. Versus him being going to jail because... I guess you're planning on bringing him back in the fourth one if you make one, and I'm like, eh. But I hope they do make a fourth one. I like this one. I hope you bring the same team back, bring the same directors back, bring the same writers. Let's make it happen. But Sony hasn't announced anything yet. I'm surprised by that. 21 Jump Street crossover. You could do it. That's what it was. I don't. I don't think so. They're still the leads. You, you just introduce them having a team, and it makes sense because they're older. They can't do this stuff by themselves, and I think that works. <laughs> uh, I, I hope, and I, I really hope this too. When you make a fourth one, or yeah, when you make a fourth one in a couple years, keep the January or February release date. Yeah. Don't put it in the summer. Because you put this movie in the summer, it's not yeah. going to be successful. I think it'll be successful. Dep oh, depends on when in the summer. If you put it late summer, it it might be. I think it'll it works better in the spring and early. It just has a following, so that's the only reason I think it'd be successful. 
It does, but also like you don't if you put it in the summer, you put this movie next to a Marvel movie, it's not it's not going to go well for it. You know, go well for any movie. You put it next to a Marvel movie. No, that's what I'm saying. And Marvel <laughs> has pretty much claimed a lot of space upcoming. Years. <laughs> Um, following that, uh, I got a couple more topics here. Uh, Spike Lee has a new film. It's going to drop next month on Netflix called the five bloods. Um, it's about, um, black Vietnam vets returning to Vietnam, um, to search for their dead squad leader. Um, there it's by his body and the promise of hidden treasure. And Chadwick Boseman, I believe I read is going to be in it. Yeah, not excited. Not a bit. Um, Story doesn't intrigue me, and I don't think Chadwick Boseman is a great actor. So I don't either. Um, but I'm willing to give it. A, I'll I'll watch it. I'll give it a chance. Um, I haven't seen anything yet from him that has blown me away. I haven't seen Get On Up. So didn't want to. I heard that his performance in that was good. But heard that same thing about Black Panther, and I was lied to. That his performance was good in it? I don't think his performance is bad in Black Panther. It's mediocre. But I feel like you watch his performance in that, and that's what you get in much much of his stuff. You know, you yeah. liked 42 more than I did. I didn't. Yeah. That movie itself was... Yeah. I mean, I think that's his best performance. So. And that, to me, well, 42, that's a topic for a different time, too. It falls into that cookie-cutter... I don't know. And it's been a while. I hadn't seen it since high school. We watched it on a field trip. Um, to me, when I think about that film, it falls into this cookie cutter um, biopic c- category that a lot of films fall into. Where it's... It seems like a film made to show to high schoolers to, to, in, a, in, a, in some kind of history class. Well, it was. <laughs> I mean, it was. So, I mean, but, you know, when I watch films like that, I'm like... This seems a little bit bland to me. Um, you know, The Founder is another one that I definitely feel like is a cookie cutter biopic that could have been a lot better. It was all right. It was all right. 42 was all right. But, eh. Uh, but I did like Black Klansman. I think it was Spike Lee's last movie or one of his last movies. And he did a really good job with that. So I'm hoping that he brings that into this one as well. I didn't like his version of Old Boy. I haven't seen either one, but I do like Josh Brolin. Um, also, Nick Cage. Uh, so, Nick Cage has been announced he will be playing the Tiger King in Netflix's adaptation or narrative version of this documentary. Which, I'm a little confused. I thought this was going to be a movie at first, and apparently this is going to be a show. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a show, yeah. So I'm wondering, like, I don't know. I, I wonder how they're going to go about it. If it's going to be, like, just a remake of the show, but in live action form. <laughs> or is it going to be, like, a narr- I hope it's, like, more of a narrative structure. Um, I think the casting decision is fantastic. Um, I'm actually interested. I'll watch it now. I'm not going to watch the documentary. I don't care. But you tell me Nick Cage is involved in playing this crazy character. Sure, I'll watch it. Yeah. Check it out. Why not? I'm kind of curious who the other cast, like who else will be in the show. Um, but I, I think it's a really good casting choice. And I've actually seen a lot of people kind of upset about it, though, um, online. But it's people that uh, have no business making movie decisions, so or cat TV decisions, what have you. Um, which, you know, the, we can talk about this, too. Like, it became, like, a you know, a huge deal, the Tiger King, which... I was thinking about this earlier. If it if this movie came out and the coronavirus or if this show had came out and the coronavirus hadn't been a thing, do you think it would be successful? Yeah, I could still see it being successful. I think so too. I mean, you have other documentaries or other things that come out that people really, for some reason, get drawn to. Well, I know I'm trying to think. I was trying to think of some other ones on Netflix that people really got into, like documentary or whatever. Like, was it Making of a Murderer that came out like several years ago? People really got into that. Um, so I think it still would have been successful, but I don't think it would have been as successful as it is uh, because I think the everybody being at home and at Netflix like got a lot more attention 
I don't know. I mean, it's just a show of the week. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, right now, I mean, you still see stuff like memes on the internet, but nobody talks about, oh, Tiger King. Oh, Star, starting to, well, they've already watched it. There's no more. That's why I was like, oh, let's keep it relevant. Movie, movie of the week. That's it. Um, but, you know, I don't know when they made the decision to announce that they were going to do a live or, you know, a narrative version. Uh, I read it was last year. Like, I think Kate McKinnon is supposed to play the woman. I is that a rumor was, or is that confirmed? I thought she was attached before anybody else. Maybe she is. I could, yeah, I think you're right, actually. I thought it was a rumor at first, but maybe, yeah, maybe uh, we'll have to do some research and talk about that next week. But, um, so if you have less excited now, you're going to play the same character she did in Masterminds. And I like Kate McKinnon. You don't like Kate McKinnon? Kate McKinnon. I don't like Masterminds. I liked Masterminds. But I don't want to see it again. I don't, I don't want to see like another version of that. You I know? don't want to like, see it again either. <laughs> that movie was funny, man. Zach Galifianakis was hilarious in it. Kate McKinnon, Kristen Wiig. I don't blame you. Owen no. Wilson, dude. See it again, Jason yeah. Sudeikis. Oh, man. I liked it. Um, thought it was an underrated comedy of that year. Mm. <laughs> Bold take. That was a rough year. <laughs> That's the underrated comedy. Uh, but, you know, I kind of feel like i know what i'm getting with it like especially after you say kate mckinnon i want her i hope especially Nicholas, honestly with both now i'm starting to think about it i don't want it to feel like i'm watching an snl skit i want it to feel that's too bad real and it can be comedy and like not feel like i just watching somebody put a costume on you know like i want to see them become the character and I feel like Nicolas Cage could do that, but now you're putting McKinnon in there and probably other people that are going to follow around her. And I'm like, Ugh. like next thing you're going to tell me is like, um, what is, okay, I can't remember his name. I like him, nice. but he was on SNL. Uh, he's in Star Wars. Do you know who I'm talking about? He left SNL. He's not on there anymore. Hater. No, but anyways, uh, yeah, you're probably gonna fill up with other SNL people or what have you. But um, anyways, what I was what I was getting into was like a lot of people when they're doing their fan casting before it was even announced and all this, like ah oh, David Spade and like that's what people are kind of upset that David Spade is not playing Tiger King character. <laughs> it's not happening. Just watch Joe Dirt. God, I'm like, why? This is this is why fans don't get to cast stuff. And they shouldn't be li- like really listened to that much. David Spade, you want to lead your show? No offense. I mean, he's good at what he does, I guess. But sound really convincing. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I I'm not a fan of Joe Dirt, but a lot of people are. And I guess like I I don't know. It's just you'll watch your mouth. I don't know why you would you would make that casting decision because I mean you make that casting decision, which is kind of the the Kate McKinnon thing. I don't know. I'm probably not going to like this show. It's the bottom line. Well, I can I can completely see what the show is going to be now. And that's what I was going to say. My original argument was I can see if you cast like David Spade, I know what the show is now. Well, now you know. And now that you brought up the Kate McKinnon thing, I'm like, well, now I know what the show is. So I'm like not excited for it because I'm like, it's going to be like an SNL type thing where people wearing costumes pretending to be, you know, these characters but not trying to become the characters yeah not for me uh last two topics tom cruise uh he's gonna make a movie in space with elon musk uh his space pro space x program as well as nasa helping doing this what do you think oh you seem really excited i don't care at all don't care I, i don't uh, I'm not like blown away, excited or anything, but um, I like Tom Cruise, but it's just yeah, I like Tom Cruise, so I'll watch it. Oh, who cares, dude? This is how he's gonna die right here. I hope he knows that. <laughs> well, it'll be legendary for sure. He's gonna die in space. He's gonna try something. I can breathe out here. Take it off. <laughs> 
I'll I'm just like, I don't know why you do this. Why? I mean, it's it's making a move. It's pushing boundaries, sure. But you got the technology. You don't need to go up in space and film stuff, man. You can just go in a sound stage. <laughs> yeah, I will perform the stunts myself. I'll do it myself. You can do the stunts yourself, sure. But You're why gonna, do you need to go to space? He's going to die, so. <sighs> I... I hope they insure him for a lot of money so you can get your profits. I hope that this is actually Fast and the Furious 10 and Tom Cruise is going to be the villain and the shooting is <laughs> Vin Diesel's not beating up Tom Cruise. <laughs> I meant a spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now we're moving on to the final topic, which is the biggest topic of the week. Right, Taika... Is it? It's Star Wars. It's Star Wars. Always Star Wars. Wars. Uh, Taika Waititi is directing um, a Star Wars film. He will also be co-writing it with um, the lady who uh, co-wrote 1917, uh, Christy Wilson Cairns. I can't pronounce her last name. Can't pronounce anything. Um, (laughs) She's co-writing it with him, and he will be directing the film. It got announced this week on May the 4th. But no, no details about the film. We don't know. Is it the first film in this new Star Wars trilogy they have planned? Is it a standalone film? What do you think? And how do you feel about it? Uh, I'll watch it, I guess. You'll watch it, you guess? I just, I'm so tired of Star Wars right now with all the news they've got coming out. Stuff that gets canceled. Oh, man. Uh, see, this changes my opinion on that. Like, well, not changes my opinion on the other stuff, but... I'm really excited. So um, just because I'm excited for one project doesn't mean I'm excited overall. I just no. I mean the other stuff. I'm still like you know I got really excited about Kenobi, but then and maybe I, so maybe I shouldn't get excited about this, but I got really excited about Kenobi. Uh, we have the scripts written. We're gonna start filming soon. New scripts. We're gonna throw those scripts out and get new ones because <laughs> we decided to take it a different direction. So new writer. New writer. Don't even know if it's the same show anymore. It could be completely different. You could have had this whole badass thing with him confronting Vader at the end that I got won't. He goes on this mission, Yoda, Qui-Gon Jinn, all this different stuff. That could have been the original version, and then Kathleen Kennedy looked at it and was like, ah, I don't think so. And now the new version. Where's Boba Frick? Uh, he's in the new version. Yeah, I hope so. Obi-Wan's going to so, meet up with him, and they're going to be fighting um, Tuscan Raiders. That's the whole, movie, the whole show. Uh, yes. <laughs> yep, that's the new one. Um, I don't know, and then now it's got now it's gotten pushed back too. I'm like, this this show should have came out in 2021. That's when we should have got it. We should have got that. Cassie and Andor should have came out this year. First of all, it should have ever been made. It should have been something else. But yeah. considering you were making that show and had announced it before Kenobi, it should have came out in 2020. Where's that show at? Is it done filming? What's happening? Not done. Don't even have a poster. You announced this a long time ago. What is? Do we even have a title? Like, is that the actual title? No, there's no actual title. It's just being called Kazian Andor, but we don't know what it's called yet. Um, which I don't think it's gonna be called Kazian Andor. I think it's gonna probably gonna be called like Rebellion or something. But I don't know. Uh, which I hope Kenobi is just called Kenobi, but don't know what that is. Because it's not getting made. It just keeps getting pushed back. Um, and as far as like this, what I feel differently about this though is because. A couple months ago, too, they announced that the other guy who directed Slight was directing a Star Wars film. Haven't heard shit about that since you then. <laughs> don't know if it's still happening. Don't know what movie it was. What, they don't know. You know, for all we know, the that guy could be directing the first film in, this, in the new Star Wars trilogy, and Taika's directing the second one. I don't think that's the case. But you never know. But it, I don't know. We also... Kevin Feige is supposed to be producing a movie. <laughs> what movie is that? Is that the Taika one? Is that the guy that the one the the slight? I think they said the one the the guy from Slight's making is not the uh, Kevin Feige one, but I'm not sure. I thought they were going to tell you. Keep it no, a secret. Disney rep was on the phone. Just oh snap! snap. He, that's all the information you got. Definitely not. Uh, well, I don't know. You know, based off my prediction, I think the one from the guy who directed Slight is going to be an anthology film. 
which is confusing because they put those on indefinite hold. But I would think they might be going to bring them back, and that that's what that guy's going to do. Because I can't imagine you making a new Star Wars trilogy, Uncharted Territories, and bringing in somebody, a smaller director like that. So I, I would imagine he's doing an anthology film, and I would imagine that Taika is making the first film in the new trilogy. Which I also will predict, because that, that movie is supposed to come out December 2022. That's not happening. I think it'll get pushed back to December 2023. That's what I'm predicting. Which I don't know what that means for Avatar, because I think Avatar, there might be an Avatar movie coming out that year. So they might readjust that. Just... <laughs> Cancel it, man. <laughs> Who cares? Um, so I don't know about that, but I do think they'll probably end up pushing it back to 2023. But maybe not. I don't know, but I think so. Because now you're pushing Thor back. You're going to push the filming on that back, so he's going to be pushed back more. I don't know. I would assume he's probably pretty much he's done with the Thor screenplay now. Um, and that he's working on the Star Wars one. Uh, which he has ideas. I'm assuming he had, you know, it was rumored a while back. So I, they've been in talks for a while. Um, and he's also, this isn't the first Star Wars thing he's directed. He's directed an episode of Mandalorian. One of the best episodes of the season. Did a really good job with that. Played a character in the Mandalorian. Um, so I'm excited. And, you know, listening, I know you haven't watched it because you haven't watched Mandalorian yet, but um, I actually I really liked it. They put this behind the scenes stuff with Mandalorian. I can't remember what they're calling it, but they put it on Disney Plus, which I thought was going to be like a, uh, a movie, like a documentary. Turns out it's not. It's an episode by episode thing, and they haven't released them all at the same time. They're doing it like the Mandalorian was, with the release, releasing them weekly. I don't know which each episode is going to be, but last week was about directors, so the whole episode was just the directors of Mandalorian. And sitting around a table and talking about their experience and cutting to like different stuff behind the scenes. And I really liked it. John Favreau was on there, um, Taika, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, um, the guy who directed Dope, Dope, um, Ruth Mangor. and Deborah Chow. Yeah, him. And um, also uh, Dave Filoni. They were all on there and talking about it. And I thought it was really cool. Um, and, you know, Taika was talking about in that what the kind of thing or all of them all of them but uh we're talking about the type of things that i want to hear from people making star wars is that they appreciate the fans they appreciate the lore the world and you know bryce Dallas Howard was talking about that and i really respected how she was talking about it you know with her father making solo her being around that industry around george lucas all her life because her and him and uh, Howard had a good relationship, so she, you know she was talking about a, a time that she was with her dad and George Lucas uh, and another guy, and like just falling asleep when she was a kid and like listening to their conversation. I'm like, oh man, just, can, can you imagine? Um, but yeah, they, just the I'm glad these people are, are making this show, and I think this is the type of people that should be making movies. And, and I didn't Bryce Dallas Howard's episode in. Season one is not my favorite. I'm not a big fan of that one, but that's, it's not bad. She didn't do a bad job. It's just like the episode itself. But so I don't know. She's coming back for season two, I think, which I'm excited for. I don't know. Maybe she'll get a movie down the line or something. That'd be cool. Um, but I don't know. Uh, he, he also, they talked about humor. That was the thing I was getting at with Taika. Him and bon, John Favreau both talked about that. Hell, you know, Taika's episode has definitely humor in it. Um, there's a scene in the beginning with two tor- stormtroopers on speeder bikes or their speeders, and uh, they're like just shooting their gun, like like target practice at like a, like a, a some sort of like little creature that's hopping around. And I'm like, this is like humor that fits into Star Wars though. It's like, oh, what would these troopers do if they were just bored waiting for commands and they're out there just like fucking around? Like, it works. Uh, I think Jason Sudeikis was actually one of those stormtroopers too uh, but yeah I, i'm excited to see what he does i hope it's the start of a new trilogy and i hope that trilogy is in the past it's past time man yeah all right guys that's a, do you have anything else said okay that's our episode of happy hour we'll be back next friday with all new episode don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel